Tonight, we are diving into a topic that I think a lot of parents really struggle with, and that is the bedtime routine. Now, it's daytime, but I'm saying tonight because it's nighttime routine. So I have a great nighttime routine with my kids. We are in bed in about 15 minutes, maybe 20 on a rough night. I want to break it down. I want to tell you how we have accomplished this. We have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. My husband and I can do bedtime very quickly. We have no whining, no complaining, no meltdowns or breakdowns. It goes really smooth and it's not something we dread. I feel like for a lot of parents, bedtime is like a marathon. It's supposed to take 20 to 30 minutes max and somehow they're taking two hours. I would be critical here and say that's not a routine. That is chaos. So we need to find some structure, some organization, and I'm going to try to help you with that a little bit today. So let's jump right into it. The first thing I do when it comes to bedtime is a little bit of prep. So I'm just going to say our kids go to bed at 8 p.m. And that's about the time that we're in their room, doors shut, maybe reading a book, and we're out of their room by about 8.05. So if 8 p.m. is like the in-the-bedroom goal, around 7.45 to 7.50, I start doing my my part in the routine. So I'm going into their bedrooms and I'm putting out their jammies for my two-year-old that includes a nighttime diaper. And I'm shedding their curtains while I'm in there. I'm tidying up any toys that are out, basically minimizing distractions. So that's what I do in the bedrooms, curtains, blinds, jammies, diaper, um, and just making sure their bed's kind of ready to go. Then if I think about it, I will hop in the bathroom and I will go ahead and preload their toothbrushes with toothpaste. This helps keep the bathroom a little more tidy and again, speeds it up. Our four-year-olds can get a little messy with the toothpaste. You know how it is. Then I will head to the kitchen and get out their vitamins and leave those on the kitchen table for them. Now that I've done all the prep as far as items they need, I'll sort of say, hey guys, it's bedtime. Let's go. And at this point, like mom and dad are both standing up to encourage us to get moving and if there's any toys out in the living room, dad probably has already cleaned them up because he usually does while I'm in the bedrooms. And so dad, kids, mom, everybody's sort of tidying up any toys. I'm shutting off the TV if needed and shutting down some of the lights, trying to dim it, set the vibe for bedtime and the tone a little bit. So that's sort of like the prep work and the foundation. Okay, this is how we start bedtime off on the right foot and in the right direction. I think it's really important that the parents set the tone. We got to get up. You can't be scrolling on the couch, laying down on your phone going, go get ready for bed. That's not helping them. That's not motivating them. And even if your kids are five, six, seven, and they can get ready for bed on their own, they still might need a little bit of that like motivation and support. Maybe it's just you going through the motions with them, even though they're doing them independently. So get up, get them motivated and get them in the right vibe. So now let's quickly go through our actual routine. I don't think the steps make or break our process. I really don't. I think a lot of people do the same things. So first, usually I will tell the kids to go in the kitchen and go to get their vitamins. So they'll get their vitamins, then we head to the bedrooms, they'll do their jammies. Our four-year-old sometimes wants help, sometimes is feeling independent. Two-year-old obviously needs help, they get a new diaper and jammies. So jammies happen, we might run a brush through their hair if we get a chance, and then we are heading in the bathroom where we are brushing teeth, and then the four-year-old is going potty. Now, if they wanna to run to the kitchen real quick, grab a drink, they will do that. And then we are dividing. Mom has one, dad has the other, and we split up for bedtime in their bedrooms. And that's how we do it. We do divide and conquer, and it works very well for us. And we alternate nights. So the one that has the four-year-old will then take them into their bedroom. They get one book. And then if they need one more drink of water, sometimes they'll get that one more drink of water. We give them a little bit of cuddles. We put them in bed. The light goes off, and that's it. We say goodnight. With the two-year-old, so after... We've divided, one parent takes them in the bedroom. At that point, they do not get a book right now. Sometimes we've gone in phases where they have, other phases we haven't. And right now they don't get a book. They go in their room and we are carrying them, doing a little rock with the light off. And at this point, their sound machine is on. The curtains are obviously black. Like the room is dark and ready for bed. They get maybe two minutes of rocking and hugging and walking around their room. And then they go down in their crib. They're still in their crib. They get their little tiny blanket that they get. And that's it, we're out of there. Both doors are shut at that point and we do not see our kids until the morning unless the four-year-old wakes up needing to go pee and needs an adult. <laughs> Here's the thing though, I really don't think the steps matter. You probably do very similar steps to that, but maybe yours takes two hours. It's not what you do, I believe it's how you do it. Editing Amanda here. I just wanted to jump on and say that bath time is not part of our bedtime routine because we don't do it every night. So on the nights we do need to do bath time, we add it onto the front and we just make sure to allow enough time to get it done. 
If you want to learn some of our bath time tips to have an organized, smooth bath time routine, check out this video. I will link it in the description. It is a four minute video packed full of bath time tips. So check that out in the description. So we've set standards in our household. We have consistency, we have routines, and we just have like a level that we hold our kids to. Meaning when it is bedtime, if we're in the middle of jammies, they do not go play with their toys. They know it is not toy time because we have set that standard and expectation. They don't run around the house. They don't get distracted and play with things because they know we are on a mission at that point and the mission is bedtime. They know that's what we are doing. And you can do different things with this. You can do a like nighttime checklist. You could do a dry erase board. There's different ones with like magnets. So you're not having to write things out. You can do that. We don't have any of that. We have no physical schedule in our four-year-old's room, but sometimes we will play kind of like pretend checklist. And if they just are like, kind of like, la, la, da, 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 we'll be like, hey, what's next on your list? And we'll hold up our hand and be like, what's next on the list? And it's just their pretend list. And they'll look at their hand and they'll go, you know, jammies are on, check, brush teeth, check. And then we'll maybe help them or they'll say potty, not check. And then they'll go run to the potty. So we'll do that. And that keeps them like task focused. And like, again, we are just, we're going down that routine. We do the same steps. We might slightly change the order some nights, but it's not a big deal because it's the same general structure. I do also want to touch on if one of us, for whatever reason, is gone or out of town, if we are down to one parent to the two children, what we do is we get all the way ready for bed, put the big one in their room with the light on in their book. They can flip through their book. We will go put the baby down first, the two-year-old get them completely down into bed. And then we will go in the four-year-old's room and read their book and finally put them down. Both my husband and I are very capable of doing the routine on our own. We've done it plenty of times when needed. It's very doable, even if you are outnumbered as the parent. I think the key to a successful bedtime routine is consistency, organization, routines, and setting standards and expectations. What you tolerate and expect from your children will basically result in how bedtime unfolds. If you allow them to run around for two hours and just exude chaos, that's what they're going to do because they're toddlers and they're crazy sometimes. It's up to you to set the tone, the standards, and the general flow of bedtime. So with a little planning, organization, and consistency, you can turn bedtime from that huge marathon battle into a smooth, peaceful, calm, 15, maybe 20 minute routine. It is very, very doable. Oh, and then one more thing that does help us on our nighttime routine is our children have the hatch light in their bedroom. And at that eight o'clock time, it turns red in both their rooms. They have one. It turns red and the white noise kicks on. And that's just a further reminder of, hey guys, it's red. In our house, red means night night time. If you are interested in learning more about the hatch, I will link a video now. If it doesn't come up for whatever reason, check the description. I will definitely link it there as well.